Hey guys, so we thought we'd do a series of interviews here with some of our golfers who are out in America at the moment. This is Joe. He's a, a junior at the University of Incarnate Word. Um, now, I've known Joe for a long time. He's from the same county as me. Uh, we thought we'd ask him some questions about his time at Incarnate Word, how he was recruited there, and just generally, you know, golf and life out in Texas. So firstly, Joe, hello. Um Hello. Do you, you want to start? Just tell us a bit about how the semester's going, what you're up to at college, that kind of thing. Okay, yeah. So it's uh, obviously just getting started now. It's kind of end of February, which is when tournaments start to really get busy. And uh, it's been good. Obviously, here in Texas, we've got lovely weather. So we're able to practice outside as soon as we get back in January, which is which is great, kind of getting us prepared um we just got back from our first event yesterday which went well yeah we got second which was obviously Excellent. pretty good and it was really tough conditions and we all played quite well very solid yeah um, it's yeah it's been rough out there at the moment right it's a bit windy it was brief <laughs> it was windy it was, the greens were rock hard they were so firm and yeah, yeah it was tough but we where were you well. for that yeah whereabouts were you that was a Polish turn in New Orleans. Oh, very cool. I think they had a tour event there back a few few years ago. There's Zurich, I think. Awesome. Yeah, and you could tell it's not an easy course at all. Excellent. It was tough. Is that something you enjoy, yeah. the travelling to different tournaments, different places? Yeah, I love it. that's what it is. I mean, that spell kind of between January and February is like, you're just waiting to get on the road and you're practicing and all you're thinking about is starting to travel in and I mean I love traveling with the boys it's great and yeah luckily we get to leave again on Saturday off to Houston so oh brilliant excited for that. hopefully the yeah. wind die down for you I know it doesn't too much in the spring in Texas but uh you never know <laughs> I'm not <laughs> decent so can you tell us a little about your little bit about your sort of day-to-day -day, a week at Incarnate Word maybe when you're not on the road at a tournament yeah, sure. So uh, our kind of day to day, I guess, uh, Monday to Friday is very busy. I mean, we've got kind of with our team, uh, our class schedules are different and it kind of works really well in terms of we're in charge of or we're in control of our practice sessions. So some boys will go in the morning, they'll wake up and be straight out to the golf course at say 8 30 and they'll be there until 12 31 okay. so they get a good four or five hours of practice come back for class in the afternoons and then for me my classes start at 1 30 okay no sorry my classes start at 1 30 so as soon as as soon as it hits 1 30 i'll eat my i'll eat lunch and i'll be straight out to the course and nice. i'll be there until sunset nice and this the course you guys get to practice at it's Briggs Briggs Ranch, is it? Ranch, yes, yeah, lovely course. It's uh, we're very lucky actually to practice at Briggs. It's very private and kind of members only course. So, I mean, going there in the evening, you kind of have the place to ourselves, and oh, nice, it's lovely. I mean, yeah, and then Tuesday and Thursdays, I forgot to mention, we have team workouts. They start at seven, mm -hmm. so they're seven to eight, and then. Yes, that's just Tuesday and Thursday. Okay. Do you do any of the that stuff outside of the team workouts yourself or? Yeah. Just to that? So, for example, on a day like today, where we got back yesterday, we have the day off today, Wednesday. So oh. most of us will probably head down to the gym and do like a, a light session, kind of keep the body moving. And then in a normal week, we'll usually go one or two other days during the week. Right. Yeah. Because, I mean, team workouts are... They're pretty intense. That we're lifting some heavy weight and before the season starts. So obviously you don't want to overdo it with golf. So it's more just outside of that stretching and kind of looking after your body and all of that yeah. stuff, really. And is that all planned for you, all those team workouts? Yeah. Yeah. So they're with our trainer, Spencer. He's He's been really good this year and he'll have a plan for us every week kind of checking in with our progress and I mean every, yeah coach schedules them same time every week and yeah we'll be in there trying to get trying to get stronger I guess get further, not getting 
<laughs> you don't need to go any further. You'll be in it 30 yards past me instead of 25 by then. Um, so, so you mentioned coach there. You've got a new coach starting last August, Coach Kearney. Um, what's he like? Yeah. Oh, he's, he's been brilliant. He's been really good. We're, we're all really enjoying being working with Thomas. He's been great. He, uh, he was obviously he was a really good player back in his day. Yeah. Played on the Corn Ferry Tour. He played a PJ Tour event. So I think knowing that is it's great because you kind of get to see he he's very modest. He kind of says like, "Ah, oh, I I'm not as good as what I wanted to be." But you kind of look at it and think, "Well, you were pretty good." So picking <laughs> small yeah. things, picking small things he said is great. And yeah, he's really he's always there to help and. He, what I like about Thomas personally is like he kind of puts the we're in control of what we want to do. So mm -hmm. he's not going to tell us to work on our putting. We might have just come back from a tournament and four of the five boys struggled on the greens, but I didn't. Yeah. I don't want to be practicing putting. He's not going to make me practice my putting. He's going to say, look, you recorded your stats. What do you need to work on? Work on that. So I, I enjoy that side of practice and yeah he's been great. it's been really and it's nice to have another english accent in the uh yeah, in yeah. the team we've got enough of them yeah. you and chalky as well yeah um, some of you just touched on there obviously your practice having it different to other members of the team how does a week before a tournament look for you guys so like running up to a tournament is there anything special you do anything in particular um with regards no, to Maybe if we, so for example, this week we knew it was going to be windy. So mm -hmm. obviously practicing different yeah. shot, bit of shot making. But I feel like it's very similar day to day. It's just, okay. you know, every day just trying to practice a little, get a bit better, work on what you need to work on. And, mm -hmm. you know, when the tournament comes around, play yeah. your tournament and see if what you've been doing works. If not, yeah, try something else, I guess. Decent. And what about that tournament week? Obviously, I've been playing college myself. I know certain tournaments are different to others, but sort of three quarters of tournaments work pretty similar, don't they? If you can touch a little bit on that and how you guys do it in kind of word. In terms of just what when you travel, travel, practice rounds, see the, who goes. Yeah. So, okay. So the teams usually announce Friday, Friday mm -hmm. during the day. We have practice on Friday. Because uh, obviously we have one good thing about college is that you have most athletes don't have classes on Friday. So you get Friday pretty much to, to play golf, which is brilliant. <laughs> uh, we get the team announced on Friday and then depending where we are, but it's usually pretty early Saturday morning, we'll be, uh, we'll leave to the event. Mm -hmm. uh, drive. So I used last week for an example, drive to Louisiana get there Saturday during the day, have a team meal Saturday night, kind of forget about golf, have some fun with the team. And mm -hmm. that's great. Sunday practice round. Uh, they can be busy. You know, there's lots of teams out there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, it's great. You're just playing with, playing with your teammates, learning the course. And then, yeah, competitions start Monday usually for us. And it's 36 holes on Monday. So you're out there all day pretty much. Sunrise to sunset. And they can be a grind. I mean, yeah. usually it's hot and you just see players just, yeah, it can. it's a grind. It's great. I love it. And um, yeah. yeah, so you, you get lunch on the course. One thing as well in America is... As soon as you finish 18 holes, it's not like England where you go back in and you have lunch. You, you finish your 18th hole and then you just you walk straight to the next tee as if as if you didn't even finish a round. It is, it is crazy. I remember my first tournament. I, I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> I finished my first round and I was like shaking. I was going to shake my playing partner's hands and they're off <laughs> on the next tee box. Coach whizzes around and gets um, you halfway around in the second round as well. <laughs> yeah, you know, buggy just getting lunch and just dropping it round. Yeah, it's great. And then 
obviously on on the Mondays you usually get back to the hotel at about eight thirty. Dinner's usually provided at events. If not, mm-hmm. you eat with the team. I mean, yeah, you get back at eight thirty and you're pretty much ready to fall asleep. <laughs> and then you're up you're, you're up at five forty five the next morning, eight o'clock tea times and yeah, the last day is eighteen holes and yeah, it's great. I mean, tournament weeks are are busy. They're mm. they're intense and I mean they're great. That's that's what I love the most about being out here is competing. Yeah. And yeah, obviously you get to two days off class as well isn't a bad thing. <laughs> and Fridays off, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, can you tell us a bit more about that, the sort of the balance between class and golf? Obviously, see, Incarnate Word, no, it's not Harvard, um, let's say, but it's also you know, private university. It's a good university, isn't it? And that they're not going to just going to let you, you know, not go to class and things like that. So can you touch on a bit of that, please? Yeah, so that's, uh, that's something I could definitely say I struggled with in my first mm-hmm. few years. It was... You really, you come here kind of thinking it's it's going to be golf, 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 which it is a lot of the time, but you really have to just stay on top as much as you can. I mean, get really friendly, not friend, but get to know your professors well, well enough so where you can just go in and say, look, I'm going to be missing the next two days, mm-hmm. like Monday and Tuesday of class next week. Can you send me? some homework I might miss up, miss uh, if we have a quiz kind of rearrange to do it another time. It's just, it's a lot of, you've just got to be quite organized with it and plan it out, know what you're going to miss, try and catch up. I mean, it's easy to think whilst you're traveling, you're going to have time to do homework, but kind of, as I just described, yeah. it's crazy whilst you're traveling. <laughs> try and get it done before uh before you travel and then yeah I mean and as well the professors they all know you're a student athlete so they know you've got stuff so if you just communicate well with them I mean it's not easy but you can stay on top of it it's fine yeah I think that's that's how I find I think you're spot on there you know trying to keep ahead there's not that much to do is there if you as long as you keep ahead of it it's when it starts to build up and you're that's the, that's the last thing one is going to a tournament and you've got to do three assignments and yeah. you end up going to 10 or 30, 11 o'clock and you've got to wake up at five the next day. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, I've seen it happen. It's, it's, yeah, it's not. I've been not there myself. I'm sure you have two at one point or the other. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what degree are you doing? What are you studying? I'm doing a sports management degree. Okay. Is, I, it's great. I love it. It's, it's yeah. really fun. I mean, learning about sport, it's fine. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, some classes are tough. I'm getting into like junior, senior year, and yeah. the class is a little bit harder. So, but it's great because you 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 have your first year where you're doing kind of like general studies. You've got like history classes, kind of same as school, and they're great to kind of help you learn how to stay on top of whilst you're traveling for when you have harder yeah. classes like i have now that was that so, was the next question because we find a lot of people don't want to do those or gen ed as i call them you say general studies yeah um people think oh i don't want to go back and study those things again but i personally found because they were somewhat easy classes it was quite nice you didn't have much to catch up on co- the, sorry the the professors didn't particularly care that much if you weren't great in the class did you find the same thing yeah yeah 100 percent. i think they're kind of like you're learning in classes on mm-hmm. how to work around golf and school i mean i remember in my first year i had a history class i had like a few classes online a, a world literature class and yeah mm-hmm. the professors i mean they're not as strict as say your business professors later yeah. on in the year. And yeah, it's it's a good way to learn how to manage your time pretty much. Yeah, good. And I mean, well described. I was the same. I was, kind of, I 
it's kind of like I don't want to go to history class. I've already gone to history, but it's I mean it's one semester. That's another thing. Like your classes are only one semester. You don't do a class for a year. Yeah. So you just go there, do do your class, do a bit of homework, and then you get to play golf. Sounds it's like fun. a bit trade off to me. <laughs> so how have you found so you've been in you actually started in the january didn't you so you've been in texas now on and off for the best part of three years um yeah. how have you found your time in texas help you when you've been coming home like is there anything in particular with golf at home or time management anything like that that's helped definitely I mean, time management organization, yeah. It's, I mean, you get out here, you're on your own and you've got to do it. But I think golf in Texas, you get, you get any weather, any day. I mean, one day it's 25 degrees, sunny, no wind. And then the next day it's, I mean, it's going to sound crazy, but the next day it can be five degrees blowing 30 miles per hour winds, which is great for golf. I think it's like, I mean that's golf in there, you, especially in England. Yeah, you never know what you're going to get. You got wind, you've got. So yeah, I think that is good to being in Texas in terms of you. You play in every condition, every every condition. I mean, yeah. Good. Um, I was going to ask you a bit on the your conference championship last yeah. year. I was going to ask you what's your best moment in college. I'm assuming that would be the answer so far is that the answer i guess yeah, <laughs> yeah. about that, what happened yeah so uh that was a course called stonebridge ranch in dallas or fort worth mm -hmm. um i was kind of playing well before in that during that semester i was coming in the top 10 a lot and uh i was getting close i had a tournament two weeks before that or two events before that and uh I played really well on the 36 whole day, had a lead, and obviously I'd ended up not winning. Mm -hmm. So I think that helped because I had that experience of being up the top. And then obviously at conference, I started, I played well the first two. So with conference, that's three rounds of 18. That's different to um, a normal tournament. So yeah, I played the first two first two rounds and I think I was two shots off the lead to Charlie was Charlie one of my best it? mates yeah <laughs> yeah she made it I don't know it was it was weird it felt like I was playing a junior open or something it's your parents and, um, it's your parents were there as well weren't they or was yeah, my parents came out to watch which yeah was pretty cool I mean yeah and then uh yeah the course was really tough I mean, pars were a good score, and yeah, I ended up ended up winning by a shot in the end. So Exciting. that was definitely my highlight. Definitely my highlight, and then going to regionals was great. Yeah, an experience is cool. It? Yeah, it was amazing. I loved it. Awesome. And my, I guess, second to last question is going to be: What? Obviously, you've got another year and a half left in college. Do you have any ideas what you want to do after college? I mean, that's that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's a secret. At the stage, I don't know. I'm definitely at the stage where I'm starting to think about that. As much yeah. as I don't want to, you kind of put it off, but I'm starting to think about that. And I think as my classes are getting harder, you get more into them and I'm starting to look more about my degree and mm -hmm. what that's going to do for me. I mean, I'd love to play golf, obviously. Yeah. And I'm sure I'll give it a go. Uh, but the, I mean, the great thing about coming here is you get your degree as well. So mm -hmm. I've always got that. Yeah. I mean, maybe I'll stay out here. Maybe I'll come home. I mean, I've got options, which is great. Yeah. So, okay. Awesome. Yeah, we'll see. I'll have a better answer this time next year. I hope. Yeah. Not, yeah. I guess it's a bit early to be pushing you on that question. Uh, and then the question I'm going to ask you, last question: What's your number one tip for people going through through the recruitment process? 
what would you say to them if you were you know could go back in time what would be what you would do okay I, I would say try and talk to your coach as much as possible get to know like the coach who as an international is going to be I mean he's that's going to be the he or she will be that's the first person you contact if you have a problem the person looking after your goal and I feel like you need to make sure you're going to have like a solid relationship because I mean the school might be amazing but you might maybe not like when you speak to the coach maybe I mean it's hard to work out how someone is over the phone but you can get a good understanding and I think yeah just getting to know the coach is very important because like I said that's going to be that's your guy when you're out that's that's it okay great something a bit different um and one more thing I was going to ask you because so you're at Incarnate Word and that probably wasn't where you thought you were going to end up I remember going through this with you back years ago and I remember you were very specific on that you wanted to be in like the southeast of America Florida South Carolina um obviously that isn't where you ended up are you glad that that was the case yeah I mean I love I love it here that's that's another you you've got to have your what you want but you've got to be open to other places as well of course mm. like I feel like I couldn't have yeah I love it here it's brilliant it's not where I thought I'd be but yeah I love it I mean I've got pretty much blue skies every day mm. and yeah I'm playing golf playing golf in shorts and t-shirt in January isn't a bad thing <laughs> it does help okay brilliant all right mate well thanks for doing that um yeah of course yeah i'm gonna stop